Hi, everybody. It is December 25. It is Christmas. And for those of you who celebrate Christmas, I hope that you are having a really wonderful day. And I hope that you are pondering on Christ, not materialism. Yeah. Thinking about Jesus and what Jesus would be doing right now. Would he be waiting for a savior, sitting back, watching TV, just waiting for his savior to come and, and then just catapult him right on up to heaven so that he doesn't have to uh, worry too much about what is taking place here in the world, like right now, all the suffering? Would Jesus just be ignoring it? Or would he be just so devastated and trying everything he possibly could to stop this evil? I don't know. That's up for you to answer my answer to that. You know, it kind of comes quickly. Uh, I don't have to think too much about it. We need everyone. We need everyone, every individual on the planet right now to reevaluate their beliefs, to become aware of their beliefs, where they come from, how their beliefs motivate their behavior, whether that behavior is taking action, or whether that behavior is in action, we need everyone to really think, what am I doing? How am I living? And hopefully that will bring them to more and more awareness of what is going on inside them, an awareness of how they think, how they are motivated by these beliefs, and beliefs are not true. They're beliefs. Simply that. Beliefs. And beliefs allow us to be comfortable. If that belief that you have is allowing you to be comfortable when the world is friggin' collapsing and suffering is... is exponentially increasing every single day, then something's wrong with that belief. And if you have a belief that tells you that you sitting back waiting for a savior, whether it's Jesus or Trump, then something's wrong with your belief. You're allowing that belief to simply give you permission to sit back and do nothing. Yeah, uh, there is so much going on that we don't know. There is so much going on that we do not know. Your belief that Trump is fighting for Americans and you don't do any research to really check that belief out, then you're using your belief for your own self-centered pleasure. Regardless of that belief, if you don't check it out, if you don't really think about it, if you're not reevaluating it, then you're using it for your own selfish desires. If you come across information that counters what you believe, but you don't check out that information to find out that it's true or not, to find out, well, that you have an understanding of, you have an awareness at least 
a little bit of an awareness of your confirmation bias and how that works and how that confirmation bias, well, that's like a defense mechanism. Anybody who counters that belief that you have, you biasly confirm it with information that supports that belief. But if you do all of that kind of stuff, you are so not about the truth. The truth does not matter to you. So when you come across information that counters your belief system, if you care about the truth, if the truth is important to you, you will do research to find out if that counter information is the truth. And you will not go to information that continually confirms your belief. Yeah, truth is demanding. And yeah, it's Christmas. And I'm going to say, for all of the Christians out there, I don't find a whole lot of you who care about the truth. You can, you can get offended. You can leave me comments, dishing, dissing me or, uh, but in the Bible, it says lying is an abomination. Jesus says, go and sin no more. Go, I will forgive you of your sins. Go and sin no more. Which means you, as a Christian, have an obligation to work on yourself, clean up your act, and sin no more. It doesn't say in the Bible, I will forgive you of your sin, go and sin again, and then I'm going to forgive you again, and then you can sin again, and then I'm going to forgive you again. And it doesn't say in the Bible, I will support your false beliefs. It doesn't say in the Bible, I will support you never doing any work on yourself to clean up those sins. It doesn't say in the Bible, I died on the cross to forgive you of a lifelong of sinning. Lying is an abomination. So, that we know Satan is of the lie, Jesus, God, is of the truth. Every time you lie, you got Satan in you. Every time you use those justifications that allow you to never change, and you're still thinking you're going on up to heaven, like you're on the narrow road, all you got is this belief system operating in your head that works for you. That belief system sure doesn't work for Jesus. God, it works for Satan and you. And it allows Satan to control you. You can get pissed off at me all you want. But as I see more and more being murdered, killed off, destroyed, people's lives being destroyed, animals being abused, and they have to live suffering, animals being killed, murdered, the planet, the earth, trees, every species dying, all because of lying and people accepting the lie because they're too lazy to do anything else. It works for them 
to lie and accept lies. It works for them. The Trump supporters, I don't understand. I really don't understand. But I do understand how belief systems operating in the individual, unless they are checked out, that belief, belief system is going to be defended by the individual. You will get attacked. Dare you say anything that counters that belief system but the belief system operating in that individual is all for the self-centered desires, pleasures. I'm going to live comfortably. I voted for Trump. I'm going to support all of what he's doing. I'm not going to look at those things that he's doing that counter my belief in Trump. I'm going to let him sit in the White House. I'm going to let him do exactly what every president before him has done. I'm not going to look at all of the evidence that points to Trump being just part of this evil, sick, psychopathic, subhuman group that want to enslave us all. I will not look at that evidence because it it's... No. Nope. That evidence, wow. What will it do to my belief system? It will collapse it. And it will, oh boy, if Trump isn't our savior here, that means we don't have a savior. Oh my God. Then that could actually lead that individual to think, okay, I guess the only savior is me. What do I have to do? I got to take action. So individuals in the aggregate doing that, then you got a lot of individuals taking action. And I, seven years later, seven years after starting on YouTube, I still get my subscribers saying, there's nothing we can do. Well, that psyche needs to be reevaluated. And I understand that because of that psyche, we are where we are, and the new world order has already cemented itself, and it just continues to go on. I understand all of that, but I understand that our responsibility was to do everything that we could to fight against the stripping of our freedom, of our rights. But we didn't. We couldn't get it together. You know, I always find it funny, Christians who blame the Jews, get rid of all of the Jews. They, they, their thinking is so twisted. Yes, get rid of all of the Jews, as if every Jew on the planet is a part of this. And that is not the truth. Oh, but they have that belief. If we just get rid of the Jews. And then those who believe it's the Jesuits, well, they're fighting against those who believe it's the Jews. And it's not the Jews, it's the Zionists. But, oh, it doesn't matter. Because the Jews, oh, I don't know, they came from a, a tribe and they don't know who they are. And as if you Christians know who you are. You got your false beliefs. They have their false beliefs. You know, the, the, the Muslims have their false beliefs. And the uh, New Agers have their false beliefs. But all of these false beliefs come from that low level of consciousness that exists within the individual, and they have never checked out any of their beliefs. Because, well, the truth is just too demanding. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And then you have those people who live quite sheltered lives. And they, they well, they don't, they don't have <clears throat> life experience with Jews. Um, 
or Muslims. Many live very sheltered lives and they don't even live around black people still today. So they have all of this, these beliefs operating in their mind based on someone else saying something in their community or how they were raised and, and they think it's truth when it's not and they operate on lies. These lies have so twisted humanity into moral decay. The Christians who believe it's the Jews, that small, small segment of the population, the world's population, that very, very small segment of the population, so twisted and manipulated the huge percentage of the world's population. Wow. Okay. Well, I guess the Jews were right. The goyim, the cattle. You allowed yourself to get manipulated and twisted and, and you know, but it's the Jews' fault that a majority of Christians lie and, and live a lie and live in this satanic system, never giving it up. Oh, they know that this is a satanic system. But because the principles inside them, well, don't motivate their behavior. They can continue on living their comfortable life from the fruits of this satanic system and claim to be Christians at the same time. And that's when Jesus will say, go, I never knew you to a large majority of the world's population, but all Christians believe they're getting into heaven. There is so much information coming out about Trump. There has been so much information coming out about Trump during the campaign, during these two years. So much information about Trump way before he was even on that campaign trial trail. And what? You support a disgusting, vile subhuman. And even Christians leave me comments. I've heard it from Christians in real life that they're just so happy that Trump is in office. He's a good Christian. They thank Jesus for Trump. Okay. Uh, I, I, look, you know what? <laughs> After seven years, I, I'm, I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here uh, to win a popularity contest. I am not here to get you to love me. I'm here to put information out and what I hope is that somebody has the courage to listen, regardless of how the information is presented, that they have the ability to listen and maybe they'll check out their beliefs. Maybe they'll do some work on themselves. Maybe, maybe the Christians will hear me say, lying is an abomination. That part of the Bible, the most important, very simple sentence in that Bible, lying is an abomination. Maybe they'll consider it. Seven years, social media, Christians coming out strong, fighting with one another, fighting against those who they think, you know, are the Antichrist or, uh, oh God, Carol, I so hope that you repent and that you finally accept Jesus as your Savior. It, 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 no other group. No other group has caused more division within this 
cyber land than Christians. It's uh, phenomenal. But uh, <laughs> I don't see, I see Christians arguing with one another. I see so many quotes from Christians. Um, I get slammed by Christians. I never see Christians quote, lying is an abomination. It's simple. You follow that one commandment from God. You follow just that one. And that leads you to the narrow road. Nothing else will. Nothing else will. You can have all of your beliefs that you want. You can, <laughs> it doesn't matter. If that one is not taken seriously, you ain't on the narrow road. Bada bing. Go. I never knew you is what you will hear. If you're still living a lie, if you are still lying to people, if you are betraying people and hurting people by your lies, you know, if you are claiming to be this and it doesn't match what you actually do in life, you ain't on the narrow road. You haven't even begun. Truth, Jesus, God, love, all synonymous. So you can tell me that I'm going to hell because I have not accepted Jesus as my Savior. You can have that belief. I, I don't care. But I will tell you this, and you may hear it as an arrogance. In all of my life experience, I have to tell you, I am far more Christian than those Christians that I have met. I don't know you guys in the cyber world. You can write anything you want. I'm going to take it as face value. But I don't know if you're lying. Because every Christian that I have met, except for one, I will say is it's not yet on that narrow road because they have not faced themselves. They don't know the truth of themselves. And when they have lied, and wow, do Christians lie and tear down other people so that I guess they feel better or they're presenting themselves in a certain way. When they're caught, and I have called them out, they will not take responsibility. They deflect. They play all of these games so that they don't ever have to take responsibility for their stupid lie. And frankly, the lie itself, <laughs> look, I know people lie. And that somebody has lied about me and put me in a dark light when it was not true. And I call them out and they can't accept responsibility. And they play all of these games using all of these justifications. And, and then they start manipulating, gaslighting, and attacking you simply because you so need them to take responsibility. Hmm. And what happens? They can't. They can't face themselves. They just have to believe what they've always believed. They're good. They're going to heaven. Well, you ain't. And if you are still lying, you are part of the evil. There is only, there's only one way to restore some semblance of sanity here on earth and it's not coming from 
lies. It will come from people finally getting honest and living honestly. Now, a lot of people say, well, there's nothing that we can do and it's too far gone, Carol. So give it up. Give it up? What? Should I be like you? Just having fun until I die? Thinking about the glory days of living in eternal bliss in heaven? A lot of Christians actually do believe that, oh my God, you know, uh, I am not of this world. I find, I find peace in thinking about Jesus and I pray. We're here. We are of this world. That, in the Bible, they're talking about the material world. They're not talking about exempting yourself as if you don't even exist, as if you're almost in heaven already in this life. They're not saying Hey, ignore the suffering around you. It doesn't say in the Bible, because I have prophesied all of this disaster and the suffering that comes from it, you are to sit back and praise God, believe in Jesus, hold on because I'm bringing you up to heaven. Clearly, I got off the subject matter of this video, but I'm posting this. It's Christmas, and I wonder how many people are thinking about Christ. I wonder how many people are thinking and reevaluating how they're living, and is it in accordance with the, the principles taught by Jesus? Am I trying my hardest to not carry that name that I put on myself, Christian, in vain? Or am I a Christian who really tries very hard to be the example of a Christ-led life. I call myself a Christian. I guess that means that I need to do everything that I can in my power every single day to try my absolute best, no matter how exhausting, to try my absolute best to be an example of Christ. Oh, I cannot possibly be Christ. No, I don't go there. Because that's just another form of, well, I can't do it, so I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want to do. No, we try, we try, we try. And how could you possibly even have that consciousness when you don't seriously consider and really spend an awful lot of time on that short little sentence, lying is an abomination. What does that mean? Does that mean just outright lying? No. It covers everything. Presumptions, exaggerations, living the lie, telling yourself, oh, I'm a really good Christian as I receive the fruits of this satanic system and live comfortably. It doesn't work that way. You're deluding yourself. I have spoken about the hypocrisy of many, many, many groups. Many of those. Uh, I've spoken about the hypocrisy in 
myself. I've spoken about the hypocrisy in AA uh, with alcoholic uh, who are clearly uh, using that program to um, work for themselves. Uh, don't take seriously what Alcoholics Anonymous is about. Don't take very seriously that part where it says, you know, in how it works, that chapter. The rigorous honesty part, the abject hypocrisy of the reading of the Alcoholics Anonymous preamble in the beginning where it says we are not aligned with any sect denomination. And then an hour later, everybody stands up, holds hands, and they speak the Lord's Prayer, aligning themselves to a denomination. Oh, the hypocrisy is great. In that little group, the hypocrisy of the liberal progressive Democrats. So don't, don't claim that I only talk about Christians because, well, that's part of your, your inability to really listen carefully. You hear me say Christian and boom, I caught your attention. You're more sharply focused on what I'm saying. But you didn't hear everything before it, and you didn't hear everything that I've been saying for seven years. You just think I rag on Christians, and I hate Christians, and I so don't. Because myth or real, I guess I do have a love of Christ. And I do feel absolutely 100% that I have a Christ consciousness. Does that make me great? No. I don't think in those terms. I actually, uh, and what really caught my attention big time in People of the Lie, Scott Books, uh, Scott Peck's book, People of the Lie, Christians, Americans, narcissists, malignant narcissists. If you've not read that book, I highly recommend it because it really does uh, make you think if you're if you're a serious person it will make you think it will help you to identify narcissists and uh, pathological or not those with the tendencies but it will also most importantly make you think about yourself and how you live in the world Scott Peck he became a Christian later on in life do I hate him no I have, well, he's dead now. I had, and still have, profound respect for the man. I may not have uh, the same beliefs in everything, but wow, when he comes out and says, you know, the majority of, and this is a paraphrase, the majority of the people do not take life seriously. The reason why he wrote that book, People of the Lie, was in the hopes that Christians would take their Christianity seriously. But there is, in that book, and it's a quote, oh, from someone, and I can't remember, but again, very simple. If you are not displeasing to yourself, then you know, you're, you're your belief in Jesus is, yeah, uh, uh, the self-centered, it, it's like you're, you're uh, blanky. It gives you comfort. And you can trust I'm displeasing to myself. You know, I hear people say, the only way to truth is a belief in God. Nothing could be further from the truth. Or, no, it wasn't that. God, I can't even remember God. Um, but it was...
something about having a belief in Jesus is the only way I, to get on the narrow road. I can't remember. But it, it, it's wrong because so many who believe in Jesus are not on that narrow road. The only way to get on that narrow road is to have a belief in truth that is so deep within you that that it overrides everything. It overrides confirmation bias, presumptions. It overrides everything. That principle guiding you gets you on the narrow road. And if that principle is not guiding you, and if it doesn't become so strong within you that it overrides everything in your life, where it becomes so strong that it guides you. Your ego is secondary. Your pleasures are secondary. Your laziness is secondary. Everything is secondary. Your beliefs are secondary. And it does get so strong that it compels it compels you. It is the moting, motivating force of your behavior. Truth. Everything is about the truth. Seeking it. Doing your abject best to live it. You speak honestly. And from there, from that foundation, all good springs. Regardless of the world's direction at this time, there are so many people who are hurting, who are isolated, who don't know where to turn, don't have anyone in their life that they can relate to. They are suffering themselves, even though they have not suffered the consequences of having their home destroyed or having loved ones uh, killed off or they're still suffering. And that's why I don't give it up. Now, I have no one in my life. I am completely isolated. No, I don't relate to anyone around here. Um, and uh, But if people had truth as their guiding principle, everything would change. If those subscribers that I had met who are no longer in my life had truth as their guiding principle. None of what I have experienced would have taken place. But many believe in Jesus. It is Um, fundamentally a truth that if you don't take seriously truth you will only be part of the problem and now more than ever there are so many people who really need to trust people to have that support to have people in their lives that they can trust and can go to and get some solace and support. And if we continue 
what we're doing here, calling ourselves truthers, not a term. I, I rather, uh, look, what does it mean when you have so many truthers who lie? So it, it's not, I, I don't put myself in that category. I don't put myself in categories anymore. The truth is simply, it, it, that's, that's it for me. I have no labels on me. But if we can't get it together to at least be honest with one another, to provide comfort and solace and support to one another, then we are absolutely part of the problem. And, you know, so... While we clearly have been very ineffective and failed at stopping any of these agendas, it doesn't mean that we sit back and do nothing. We have to continue, well, for a large majority, start the work of looking at yourself because the truth is not selective. It's not all the focus is on all of these external forces that are coming down and killing off all of us collectively. And most just ignore that part of truth. The most important part of truth, yourself. Get to the truth of yourself. Most people think, I know me. You don't. It's called self-deception. And if you don't do that, that work to weed out how you deceive yourself, you will only leave a trail of your own heavy footprint, destruction, betrayal, lying, damage, discord, division, all of that crap. All of which contributes to this nightmare that we're living. So, um, I guess I'm just going to post this as just talking. Uh, it's been on my mind, and it's on my mind very often, because if we are not looking at ourselves, taking responsibility for our contribution in this nightmare, if we are not, if we don't have the self-awareness that allows us to be aware of that confirmation bias operating, to be aware of, okay, I, I still haven't suffered the consequences here yet, but you know what? A lot of people have, and could it be that I'm using my beliefs to just remain comfortable? Could it possibly be that because I've never really experienced anything so jarring that maybe how I'm living and those beliefs that I have, maybe it's wrong. Maybe, maybe I need to take a look at it. Maybe I'm just as robotic as the willfully ignorant, the sleeping sheeple. Maybe I just continue to do the same thing every single day and because I've not suffered the consequences, well, could it be I have operating, I'm invincible, it's not going to come to me? And therefore, I don't have to do much because I will remain comfortable? Could that belief, well, I'm just going to wait out life and, you know, I really do want to die because I can't stand this evil world. Um, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait out life. And if I have to suffer the consequences, good. I just hope that I die to finally get to experience eternal bliss. Maybe I should check out that belief. Maybe God or Jesus will say, go, I never knew you. Could I be one of those? Have I checked out? Have I seriously considered lying is an abomination? How am I living? Do I live a lie? 
why, why am I insistent on supporting this guy Trump when I already have enough evidence to know that he seems to be kind of like the establishment presidents that we've had, yet they call him an anti-establishment, but I know that Hegelian dialectic, and I know the divine conquer tactics, and well, maybe what I'm hearing, you know, mainstream media, they all rag on him, and then and the late night talk shows, they're all putting him down and laughing about him. Could it be possible that that is the staging of this chapter, the Trump chapter of what was once the United States of America? Maybe that's all just part of it to get us on our sides fighting one another never stops but why did I for years and years and years know what I knew during the Obama years and suddenly I don't know it anymore suddenly I just believe and why am I believing a liar a narcissist a guy that is friends with the Clintons and friends with uh, uh, Mossad um, agents and what makes me think that for Trump's entire life he was within that circle and then suddenly he just came out of that circle do you think that he's no longer friends with Clinton do you think he's no longer friends with all of these like Larry Silverstein uh, you know the World Trade Center, I'm not going to go into who he is. If you don't know, just check it out. But how is it that I could, how is it that I could actually believe a guy that Goldman Sachs, he appoints a secretary to the treasury from Goldman Sachs, he is putting back into his administration neocons, John Bolton. He is, He's putting into office incredibly corrupt people, and yet I think he's a good Christian. Could I be just lied to again? If you're not considering all of that, you are so not about the truth. You're just about maintaining a belief that this guy is your savior, and he's going to bring America back when America was gone before he got into office. Merry Christmas. I don't feel bad. For those of you who want to write comments, wow, Carol, you really are negative. Christmas, and this is what you have to say. Wow. Sorry. I never bought into this. Hey, it's Christmas time. So, let me betray Christ in a really big way by celebrating his birthday. That any any Christian would know would bring him to his knees and break his heart. So I don't have to submit to you guys anymore. I finally got out of, oh boy, I'm scared of all of the people who are going to insult me and tell me I'm this and that. You do it because that's another tactic that the individual uses to maintain their beliefs, to go on living a life that is so not about the truth and therefore so not about Jesus. No matter how much you proclaim his name and say you love him, if you ain't demonstrating that love in your daily life, which means living honestly, speaking honestly. 
and brought to your knees because of the suffering, trying to help people, doing everything that you can to make this world a better place. And oh, I get the Christians that say, Carol, it's not about the works. It's not about the good works. It's about your belief and maintaining your faith and accepting Jesus as your savior. And I say bullshit to that. Sorry, and I know a lot of you believe that. Well, guess what? An awful lot of people do believe that your Bible uh, written by man, and it was, has gone through numerous interpretations, revisions, but look, <laughs> uh, I, I, look, I, I don't even know what to say about that. Um, it's, I, I don't see the good works as like the primary thing because a lot of people do good works and they're so <laughs> screwed up, twisted. They lie. Uh, they have a trail of really uh, big destruction behind them, but they do good works. That I understand. Because that is the Christian that will hear Jesus say, go, I never knew you. Because you did that all for your own. Uh, your motivation was self-centered. The good works comes from the principles that guide you truth. It's just a secondary um, effect of having principles guide you. That put you on that narrow word, uh, road. It's kind of like the um, the byproduct of living a principled life. And if you, if you love Jesus, then you can't. You can't lie and live a lie. If you love Jesus, then your self-deception will crumble away because you will know that your love for Jesus, that means taking a look at yourself because you, you read in that Bible, Jesus said, go, I will forgive you of your sins, but sin no more. If you love Jesus, you will have taken just that that Jesus said, you will take it so seriously that eventually those sins will be gone because you've done the work necessary to rid yourself of that. You don't have to behave that way anymore. Your love of Jesus or your love of truth, it sets you in the direction. And if you continue on, that's, you get to that narrow road sometime later. Most do not live a principled life. They tell themselves they do. They say, I pray to God 
and I ask for Jesus, I ask for guidance every single day. So I don't care if you judge me. While they lie and they demonstrate a life that caters to Satan. Yeah, it's really hard to take a look at yourself. Because when you do, the truth smacks you in the face. I was full of shit. I caused a lot of hurt. I lived a lie. And then it's really hard to go in an opposite direction. It's painstaking. It's heart-wrenching. It's ego-deflating. You feel ashamed. You're countering those social networks. But the more you exercise that moral core in you, you get to a place where you have no more choice. You become that. It's, it's not an ego you become it. You just, you become. It, it, you can't go back. So, uh, yeah, clearly I went off on a tangent, but it is Christmas. I do have a relationship with Christ, and you know, I've asked so many Christians, what does repent mean, and nobody could give me <laughs> an answer. Well, you just, you know, say that you're sorry for all of the uh, sinning that you have done. Really? That's it? No, it means changing your behavior. It means taking seriously Jesus saying, sin no more. The truth is, guys, if we had a majority of Christians who actually lived their beliefs, who, who really lived as best they could a Christ-like life, we would not be living this nightmare. And that, because Christians are, in this country, still a huge percentage of the population. I think it's 74%. Yeah, you're declining. But you are, my God, 93% from the get-go. That is one very clear fact. And when you juxtapose that fact to the reality that has manifested, there is a jarring discrepancy there. How could this nightmare have manifested? when we were that Christian nation that so many Christians have screamed we were, certainly throughout my lifetime. Because you are so huge a percentage still, if you actually took seriously the most important pieces of that Bible. Lying is an abomination. Go, I will forgive you of your sins, but sin no more. Go, I never knew you. If you really took all of that seriously, did a lot of thinking about those three little sentences in that Bible, 
the effect of change would be huge. Your effect could be so profoundly wonderful. I have nothing to link to below. I don't like people betraying Jesus. I don't like people betraying me. The ripple effect that each individual has is there, whether you see it or not, feel it or not, care or not. But after living in this country, and having had a whole lot of Christians attack me because I don't have the beliefs that they do or I am not going to be that hypocrite in AA, standing up, holding hands, saying the Lord's Prayer, aligning myself to a denomination when an hour before we all said we wouldn't do that. Oh, yeah. I got laughed at. I got attacked. When I tried to just change it to something more neutral, like the serenity prayer. What did I get from the Christians in AA? It works for me. It works for me. But that preamble, at the very end, what does it say? It says that our primary, our primary purpose is to stay sober and to help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So, boom! I ain't going to help anybody else by changing that Lord's Prayer. I'm going to to continue to be a hypocrite and I don't care about all of those who are uncomfortable with the Lord's Prayer. If they really want to get sober, they'll come. But we have people who actually think it's a cult here and we have people who are who have been very damaged by church so when they come in to get sober and they hear that, they don't come back. Too bad. It works for me. Yeah, it's very, very upsetting to see this kind of behavior in Christians. But this is the world that we live in. Few, few are not ego driven. And few are on that narrow road. So I'll end here. If it's a few on that narrow road, what makes you think you're on it?